Body Wise Perfect Size is pleased to bring you a talk with Lindsay Averill, producer of Fatitude. Everybody deserves respect. We don't see Fatitude as just a movie. We see the movie as a catalyst of a community, and we're sort of the, the meeting house. We wanted to collect all the voices and give them the opportunity to speak together because they're louder together than they are as one voice. Well, I, you know, I think that our tagline is apropos. I think we do want people to understand that that everybody, no matter what size or shape, deserves respect, that it deserves common decency, right? Um, but for us, we really want to pull back that curtain on, you know, the term we use is unchecked prejudice. So, um, you know, a lot of times when people are talking about fat activism, they, they, I would say, misappropriate an idea of saying the last acceptable prejudice. And I, I think that's, I think that's just absurd there's all kinds of prejudice still functioning perfectly happily in the world with nobody dealing with it, right? And so I don't think we can say the last acceptable prejudice. I think that we see ex people accepting prejudice everywhere about all different kinds of things. But I do think that that prejudice is unchecked, right? It goes unchecked almost everywhere. And I think that is actually starting to change within certain circles, very narrow circles. But in my world, it doesn't go unchecked, right? In my world, when somebody says something fat shaming in my social media feed, a hundred people converge on that person like, no, right? Shake the foundation of what you already know and allow you to see through that unchecked, pull back the curtain, through that unchecked prejudice. Like, pull back the curtain and show you, like, the way that you think about larger bodies, it's cruel and it's mean and it's not justified. But I also think that it's really, really important for people to know that they didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> so, and, you know, it sounds so silly, but I think that, I think that's the first piece, right? For every single person that's coming to the realization that bad people deserve equal treatment, is that you're you didn't do anything wrong, right? Like, you're not doing anything wrong right now. When you wake up in the morning, you didn't fail because you're a fat person. It's really clear when something is wrong, right? Like. We're, we're very clear, it's very clear that like pedophilia, wrong, right? Hurting children, wrong. Or, you know, like, bad people didn't do anything wrong. They're just living their lives. They're victims of a lot more than the dieting industry. I mean, the, you know, and in, and in some ways I think that, you know, they're, they're I, would, I would kind of say that the people who are shaming them are also victims of the dieting industry, right? Like, because the dieting industry functions on this sort of really intense matrix of having everyone of every size believe that, first of all, that there's a solution to size or that size needs a solution, right? And then secondly, that you have a right to say that. Like, I cannot tell you how many people opened their mouths and one of the first things they said to me was, oh, I heard about this great new diet. Have you heard about it? Right? And and you just want to, you know, and today when people say that to me, I very quickly say, no, and actually I'm good. I don't need to hear about it. You know, like I, you know, and, and it's the same thing like people, I've used these examples before, but people walk up in, to me in the gym all the time and they go, oh, good for you. And I turn around and I go, good for you too. Right? Like, and they look at me like, what? And I'm like, well, why are you saying good for me? I'm just at the gym. Like, I'm here because I want to be here, not because I'm change it. It's just, but those people in their own way, like, people have a tendency to be very angry at their shamers, right? And I've had the most brutal kind of shaming there is, right? I've been stalked and death threats and rape threats for the kinds of work we're doing, right? And at the end of the day, I, you can't be that angry at the people that are shaming you because the, they don't know they're doing something wrong. They have no, I mean, they know they're being mean on some, like, like, you know, romper room level, they know they're being, like, snotty, like, bully typing nastiness, but they don't, they think they're doing it in the name of righteousness, right? They think that they're, they're helping you heal your broken body, and their intention is not malice, well, the rape threats and the death threats, definitely malice, but but the average person walking up to me and talking about a diet or you look, hey, I think you look thinner, you look great, or, or you know, good for you at the gym, those people are thinking they're affirming me, right? And, and there, there's not malice 
there. And so the reaction is not to hate those people. The reaction is to kind of be like, you know, actually, I do look great. And I'm actually the same size I was last week. <laughs> right? It's, it's to reiterate that that's not the space you want to live in. You know, that you're not willing to, to buy into that. And, and to recognize that they're victims as much as, as a fat body is. Right? They're, they just don't know that they're victimizing. It takes a lot of courage to do this work. Can you tell me about some of the things that have happened to you? It's a long story, but but we got trolled and, and we got what I would call escalated trolling. So we didn't just get emails that said, stop eating donuts and go exercise, which is, you know, that's that's like first tier. I think it was Reagan Chastain, who we also interested interviewed, who talked to me about her tears and her threats. That she, and she says, like, I have tears to me where, like, there's nasty emails, there's, you know, righteous emails. She's like... You know, and then there's like death threats that are empty, and then there's death, you know, and, and you know, and she's just going up this list, and she's like, and then there's like death threats at the top where I actually think like, oh, I'm giving, going to give a talk, and they're saying they're going to bomb the building, I have to tell the police. If you're doing civil rights work, you're doing social justice work, I guess that there is, a, there's backlash, you know, and, and for us, that's what happened. We just, we launched our Kickstarter, people got, uh, a particular group got very angry, and they called our house, they called my husband's business, they threatened my life, they sent letters that said, you know, horrible things about me, like handwritten letters, they, you know, um, there was a, a kid online saying that he went to school where I taught and that he would find me and kill me, there was a, you know, there was just you know, the kind of, you know, uh, we were getting tweets that were so violent towards both Viri and I that were rape-oriented, you know, just really sort of brutal, ugly nastiness that, you know, eventually they they have gotten less so, so we still get a lot of nasty emails. But, you know, the I love you emails far outweigh the nasty ones. And so, you know, we last week we got an email from New Zealand from a, a woman named Christy, and she actually is you know, a, she was a woman who suffered greatly from anorexia and bulimia. First time she'd heard that sort of civil rights slant, and that made it concrete, and it helped, it enabled her to push through her eating disorder and to live in her body and to love herself, right? Because now she's fighting for her. For her. She's fighting for something that's bigger than an aesthetic idea. And, you know, and, and, and we get letters like that literally every day. The thing is that fat hatred is learned. Well, and, you know, studies show we're taught it by the time we're two, right? So it's, you know, it's it, it's so entrenched in our, you know, that's, I think that's, that's why when Substantia said it's in all of our fairy tales, Mary and I just kind of exploded why that, like, well, that's why they're thinking by the time they're two, because when Hansel and Gretel go to the candy house, the fat lady eats them. It's a learned behavior. It's a learned hatred but all hatred is learned what would you like people to get from this movie i'd like you to look at the things that you're looking at every day they're functioning on a level that you're ignoring and we and you can't ignore it anymore because it's doing bad things and people need to walk out of fatitude feeling like wow everything i look at is going to change now because when somebody says something that's fat shaming or hateful towards fat people, I'm going to hear it in a whole new way. As people leave the movie house having watched Fatitudes, what would you like to hear them saying? That was awesome! <laughs> no, I, I think ultimately, well, first of all, I always want people to be critical, right? I'm an academic, so I always want people asking questions. So as people leave my audience, I want them to be going, wow, that part about X was so interesting, and I totally get that. And that makes perfect sense to me. But that other part, I need to go look that up because I'm not sure I buy that. And I want to look into that more, right? So, you know, for me, I don't want people just to sort of like, I think that's the problem to begin with, right? Is that people just sort of let media pass over them and they go, oh, I think I'll just ingest that, right? And, and no, I don't want you just to ingest. I want you to question. I want you to push. I want you to go further, right? So I want people to be shocked. I want them to be... Uh, feel emotive, right? I want them to sit in front of the screen and think, oh my God, I've spent so many years letting this hurt me and I can't anymore. 
Can you give us a peek of any one story in the movie that is moving? I think the example, the Scooby-Doo example, is that one gets me every time, right? Like Lindy talking about the fact that her curse, Daphne's curse, is to be a fat woman. And then saying, no, I'm not showing that to my kids. I'm not telling my kids that I am a curse, right? Like, that's just... It, that, it, right, like that, it's just so, it's it's condensed in two seconds, the whole problem, right? Um, and then there's some powerful stuff at the end that I'm not willing to talk about yet. <laughs> <laughs> People have to go and see the movie, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Body-wise, perfect size. is so glad that Lindsay and Viri are doing this important work.